Well, this is another oddity that I found in a Dakar market. This is a Kang Wei, made in China, obviously. And I say oddity because when you look at the key, this is a cross lock, or commonly called a Zeiss lock. And this one's a little bit unusual. Here's what the key looks like. And you can see this thing, it looks like a cross, hence the name, but this one looks like it's bitted on three different sides, five pins per side. So a total of 15 pins, or indicated anyway. And the bottom one is not bitted, that's just a guide. So, we line it up like so. Slides in perfectly. The groove is on the bottom, so you always know how this thing is oriented. So it only goes in one way. Very strong spring in this thing. You probably heard that very violent shackle. Just So the test is going to be finding the right tension on this core. Very strong key, uh, spring on that thing. So anyway, enough of that key. We don't need it. We're going to be trying to pick our way. And I've had two failed videos, and it all came down to trying to find a way to tension this thing. Uh, you'll notice the cross is not, uh, the, the lengths of the legs are not the same dimension. My idea was to use a tension wrench on the bottom where there are no pins. Unfortunately, even the thinnest tension wrench doesn't fit there. So I thought, well, I'm going to have to use the top or one of the sides. So I wanted to know how far the pins were. So I started feeling around on the left, and there were no pins, nothing. On the right, same story. There are no pins. The only pins on this lock are on the top despite having a key telling us otherwise. So instead of a 15 pin lock, now we're looking at a 5 pin lock. So, big Chinese surprise there, I guess. Happy New Year! Okay, so, since I can't tension it on the top, I gotta go from the sides. I thought, well, it's a normal lock. I'm just gonna take a Peterson pry bar, just like we do with all the other locks, you know, Yales and such, and just go ahead and tension it right there from the top. So that's what we do. We stick it in there. Give it a little twist to overcome that very strong spring tension. And I'm going to be using a nice fat uh, pick, this 25 thousandths, uh, because it's a really wide keyway and I, I can get away with it. So let's see what we got. Try to find the right balance between torque on the tension wrench. And find a binder. Well, it feels like one, perhaps. Just, oops. Well, maybe not. Let's try that one more time. You can't push the tension wrench all the way in, you'll bind up that first pin. So you'll notice it's kind of just barely, barely hanging in there. About half of the depth is all I'm able to get out of it. All right, so let's try it again. Okay, felt like pin one. Okay, five. Two. Felt like three. Okay, those were not, those were just me falling off and Oh, the core definitely rotated a little bit there. So let's see where we are. Who are we missing? Who are we missing? One's okay. Looks like two's okay. Let's try one again. I might be on the tension. There we go. It was one. And you probably heard that slam out of there. So there you go. When you find one of these these Kang ways, don't be intimidated. There's not really 15 pins in these things. There's only five. And you keep some pretty good tension on that core to overcome that spring tension, and you'll find yourself picking right in there. Uh, there may be another vulnerability shimming, but uh, since it's so easy to pick, I don't see any reason to go there. We can also probably shim it from the top. These look like they are spring-loaded pawls, probably only on one side. So that might also be an option. But again, it's so easy to pick. Why waste time pulling all those special tools out? Anyway, from the Car Senegal, thank you gentlemen for your time. Everybody stay safe and stay legal. I noticed that you keep coming back but haven't subscribed to Box Me and Bill. Are you out of your mind? Stop missing videos, fool. Get with the program and hit that subscribe button right now.